Okay, everybody's got a fucking podcast. I mean, we have a podcast, so obviously anyone can do it. Wait, this is a podcast? Are you recording right now? Technical difficulties. No, you don't say anything. I'm going to edit it out. Technical difficulties. <laughs> okay. I put mayonnaise on a pickle. It was not uh, the best, but it might have been the worst. Do I see? I mean, my feet stink, right? Yeah. Ba-doop, ba-doop. Yep. Hooray. Oh, oh shit. Oh, jeez. I, I hit the table. I'm really good at knocking That's this funny. microphone over. You, so. <laughs> if there is one thing we know, it is that you can knock over these microphones. Yeah. That's fun. Hey, this is Diner. This is Jason. I am Tyler. And uh, this is Diner. Finally. Uh, we had a little mishap at the first time of recording. Not you and I. It was Dakota and I. So, uh... Called in the big guns. Here we are. I'm the guy people call when... The big gun. Yeah. They need a big gun. And then that guy's busy. <laughs> then that guy... <laughs> His line actually just forwards to me. I'm actually the receptionist. I just... Uh, I had some PTO today and I figured I'd I'd get out there. There you go. Uh, so, you know, initial thoughts on the movie? So, I, I'd watched the trailer before I'd watched anything. The trailer, like, hard tried to sell this as just, like, a straight-up comedy kind of thing. I didn't really get much, like, this was going to be kind of a drama or, like, anything kind of real deeper than that. I was like, okay, like, you know, a little odd pick, but whatever. But then after watching the other, I was like, this was, like, a solid, like, you know, drama with some good comedy bits and everything. But, like, there was a lot going on, and it was... Yeah. It was a really good movie. It was fun to see all the different characters and, and kind of their separate stories. I think Modell's the only one we didn't really get... Yeah, I found like much on, but <laughs> I found that interesting. The model is like, it's just like, I'm probably the funniest character, but no one cared to write me a story. <laughs> so I don't know. That was disappointing. But yeah, I mean, I really like it. it is um, it's kind of a story just about like, it's the growing up thing. Yeah, you know, your classic like, oh man, growing up kind of sucks. I gotta and do all this adult shit now and I get have, married and I might have made some wrong decisions along the way. It seemed to me Shreve just doesn't want to be married. Yeah. You know, like maybe he felt like he jumped the gun on it or something. He well he he did what he felt was like the natural conclusion. Be like, All right, like I'm dating somebody. All right, she wants to get married, so I guess we'll get married. All right, we're married now. Yeah. Do I even like her? <laughs> yeah, she touches my records an awful lot. Fuck that. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, yeah. So, uh, do you have a? I have a couple bad summaries. So I can go first, or I can go. You after you, you go first. You go. Okay. Yep. Uh, my first bad summary of this movie is: a uh, man fixes marriage after spending the night together in a closet with a friend. <laughs> oh fuck! Which I meant to change. Actually, uh, I meant to change it to. I thought of this in the shower one day, and I, I kept meaning to change it on here. I wanted to change it to, uh, cuck holding a. Failed cuckolding experiment fixes marriage. <laughs> that's what I wanted to change it to. Yes. Oh, that's so good. Um, so, yeah, pretend that's what I said first. Okay. And then the second one was uh, one friend turns into an alcoholic and the rest of them are too caught up in their own lives to care. Nice. Which, is actually, which actually might be more of a good summary than I thought it was, actually. <laughs> Shit, that might actually work. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so... Cool. You go. Yeah. So my my bad summary was a uh, local addicts hold group therapy meeting at diners, <laughs> or at the diner. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Everyone seemed to have some major flaw. You know, either it was gambling addiction, the drinking addiction, the music addiction. Yeah. Everyone had something. It is true. Um. Yeah. If we go through some some of the IMDb facts, can be a little goofy. Um. I just picked out some of the ones I liked. Because um, often sometimes they get a little Wikipedia-y where you go like, is that? Who wrote that? Yeah. You know? There there are times where actually I know we're about to watch a movie and I'll go in and just make up facts for Tyler to look at later. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't caught on yet. <laughs> he's still oblivious, even though I just told him. I've written two of the ones he's going to read off. 
Uh, there are, all the scenes in the diner were filmed last after the cast got to know each other. Dialogue in those scenes is a combination of scripted and improvisational, which I felt you could feel. Yeah. Um, I think you could tell who's good at that or not. Cause, and I think Evan was reading that like Kevin Bacon he said, said he, he was, was not, not the guy. good at those. Yeah. And like, and they said that it fit his character's persona anyway for him to just kind of sit there and dumbly smile. Yeah, be a little <laughs> bit of just the observer. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, Barry Levinson claims that the infamous football quiz that Eddie forces his fiance to pass is based on something that one of his male cousins did in real life. Which that is... Uh, <laughs> I would not recommend uh, pending a marriage on that, a 140-question football quiz. That's that not, girl put up with... I guess girls just put up with a lot more back then. I don't know. Cuz I mean, I wouldn't know. Cuz no, I mean, if I was a if I was a pretty gal. Yeah. Of course if we, I we do, have no idea what she looks like. <laughs> yeah, no, we never saw her once. We hear her voice just through the uh the wall. Yeah. But you know, if I had to do like 140 quiz on like days of our lives or something to to get married, yeah. uh I I'm going to fail. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. I'll watch it with you, but don't like no, Don't I'm not going to study it. What? That girl's a trooper. Yeah. Uh, I like what Modell says in the end. It's like, uh, he's like, because as, as we know, uh, a strong marriage consists of a, a, a large knowledge of uh, <laughs> football <laughs> trivia. Uh, this one got a little, this is like the INDB goofs, which I think some of these got a little cunty. This is when discussing marriage outside the diner, Eddie tells Shrevy that he and Elise will be vacationing in Cuba, which had already taken over by Castro on the 1st of January, 1959. So by New Year's Day, 1960, a honeymoon in Cuba would have been considered out of the question, which, okay. Whatever. We're going to, we're going to split hairs here. Um, so, I mean, I know I can be a cunt sometimes, so I won't completely say that's ridiculous, but, and then, I don't know. I feel like music in a movie, like, it's just kind of like whatever, but this one says, Movie ends January 1st, 1960. However, at some point, Beyond the Sea by Bobby Darren is heard. The song wasn't released till later in 1960. Big whoop. You got the, me. The music's there to fit the toe, not to be the most time-accurate piece. Yeah. If um, if it was one of like the flip side, you know, like the records or something they were calling out, like maybe I could see that yeah. if it didn't fit the time, but it just is a backing track. Right. It's fine. Uh, Baltimore and Ohio ended rail service from New York and Philadelphia to Camden Terminal in 1958. So Billy would not have arrived at that station. That's cunty. <laughs> Again. <laughs> uh, the only legit one I felt I read was like in several scenes, Boogie is seen driving his car with the column shift transmission in park. I'm like, okay, that's a legit, like, yeah. Hey, what are we doing here? Uh, again, there's some others about the era, but I don't think anyone else cares that much. No. So. Uh, I'd like to be a cunt right off the top. I got three things I'd like to be a little cunty about. Go for it. Um, I'm not sure how well the dancing in the strip club would have went. Like, you know, they were already calling security up when, uh, Billy came up and started playing piano. Yeah. I think they definitely would have got thrown out of there. I don't think it just becomes a spectacle. Everybody watches. Yeah. Or maybe the strip club just didn't have security. I, but, I mean, he was waving somebody over. Yeah. So. Unless he just saw a friend in the back, and that's how he waves. He waves backwards. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Instead of this. Fully expected like this. just security. Maybe to... he can't turn his wrist that way. Maybe he's got a messed up wrist, and he was trying to do this, but he was like, hey. Yeah. I'm going to assume we don't have enough backstory to make that <laughs> call here. <laughs> I'd like to see a separate movie about the sax player that can't turn his hand he's yeah it's just like hey how you doing in that similar vein honestly like this i feel like if you know we we modernized it you know and did this again like this could have been like a mini series where we spent like an episode a piece on each one of these guys and kind of their weaving story and like the wedding was kind of like our and we still ignore modell for some yes, reason. yes 100 percent. like he's just like a background character like he shows up for oh god <laughs> we almost lost the mic again uh, he just shows up in like the background of like all the other people's stories, but it's like just the most neglected character. Yeah. Yeah. Even though he's like easily the most interesting, most funny. Yeah. And we're just gonna we're gonna steer clear of that. Yeah. And and maybe that was the point. They just needed everyone else to shine and he just didn't need those opportunities. I guess. But although maybe he is just like super boring. Like he doesn't appear to be dating anyone. He doesn't like he appears to be I don't know, just stable financially, doesn't appear to have some sort of gambling addiction. Or, yeah. 
alcoholism. Well, maybe so. that's the thing. You know, if you think back to like your friend groups from like you know those you know high school, maybe those early college days, you're like, oh yeah, there's the the like the funny guy, right? And like that was his character trait was he was the funny guy because nothing else. How much do you know about your funny guy? <laughs> I would argue nothing. Check in on your funny guys; they are struggling. And then email us at Constant Crisis Hotline. Tell us about your <laughs> Yahoo.com. Tell us about your funny guy. Um, poor guy. Yeah, poor funny guy. Look out for your fellow funny guy. Or, yeah, whatever. <laughs> your local funny guy. Yeah. Uh, boogie punch and the mob guy in the stomach. That dude is not going to take that. And uh, if there was a short scene after the movie, it would likely be of him getting. Like, if, if we're talking like Marvel style, like after credit scene, yeah. it would be of him just getting the just, shit beat out of yeah, him or just murked. getting just straight up whacked. So, I don't know if we know how the mob works. Uh, I see, and and based off of like you know the, seeing him like after he walked out of like the hair salon and stuff, getting slapped up a bit, yeah. Um, and then yeah, like he goes in and, and punches him back at the diner later on. I like, owed you. Yeah, his name was Tank. I think. Yeah. So it's like how how big time is Tank actually? If like because like he wasn't really beating him up that bad. No, it you was... know what I mean. He was just kind of like slapping around. It was almost comedic. Like, yeah. like Tank knew like this is the kind of thing he needed to be doing to like keep the front up. Yeah, and he was just doing a really bad job at it. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, maybe he's not big time, and that's why he's like, you know, we, we don't care that much because. Well, it was. I would argue that scene's the most bad because it's like, it, it's it reminds me a little bit of like Godfather, when uh, Sonny's beating the shit out of. Uh, out of Carlo. Yeah. And like all the punches are like missing. Like it almost looks WWE esque. <laughs> like you cut, like you were filming the WWE at the wrong angle. Um, that's how that felt to me. And then it, it almost a little bit felt like, uh, if you've seen the newer vacation movie, with like at Helms, um, <laughs> when the older brother finally stands up to the little brother, cause the little brother has been bullying the older brother the whole time. Mm hmm. Because he's just he's just that personality and like he's like hitting him and he he like doesn't know how to like bully back and so he's like grabbing his face weird and shit he's like what are, hey, what are you doing stop <laughs> uh, then my last county thing is uh, logistics of calling off and then back on of a wedding yeah like I mean you figure like caterers the cake guy the you know the decorations the venue renting I mean if you call off a wedding one day and then later that day you're like actually we're calling it back on like they're gonna charge you double yeah they're like For we sure. booked it to someone else already. I mean, at, at least yeah maybe they were lucky enough that like you know they were just like oh shit well we gotta find something to fill that day up and then they just yeah. get that phone call a couple hours later it's like will you will you pay us double yeah <laughs> great yeah. We're in. Well, yeah. I mean, you figure if you're that guy with that venue, or you're the, the, you're the cake guy, or whatever, yeah. you know, it's you've like, got stuff prepared already. It's not like you're gonna start because this was only a handful of days out, right? Like, yeah. This was that week. So you figure if you're the venue guy, you're like, oh, you're canceling. Well, you're not getting that deposit back. All right. Yeah, I'm keeping your deposit. Bye. You're gonna have to put in a new deposit. And then you're calling people that like. You know, wanted that day. Hey, you want to do something? That day? Yeah. You want, you know, oh, we filled it. Okay. Yep. You want to? No, you're gonna have to pay like triple actually. Yeah. And I'm keeping. Your I'm gonna. Deposit. I'm gonna need you to go call Rebecca, and you explain to her. Yeah. Why you need this day back, and she <laughs> can call me back with her cancellation. I'm not talking to her. I'm not. Oh yeah, that'd be rough. Uh, yeah. And then I just got uh. I got my little commentaries here. Yeah. So I've been talking a lot for a while, a long time, it feels like. So why don't you, uh, what's your first note? Sure. So mine's, mine's just with like this first scene. Um, you know, we, we walk into them kind of like dancing in that auditorium and stuff. I always love scenes like this because if you like just isolate a single individual or like just two, you know, dancing partners in a room, you can tell that there's no music playing and that they are just straight up winging it. Like nobody's in the same tempo and like you can tell like <laughs> this couple it's like this is your move just do this move and then there's another couple and they have just this move so it's like yeah you know, i've watched through it twice so i kind of spent a little bit of time like rewinding it and kind of watching that again to see if there was anything odd there and yeah like everyone only had like one or two moves and they just stuck to that for like the entire anytime they were in frame and uh i, I always find stuff like that super funny yeah. um but then once uh once they go downstairs and it's uh it's fenwick and, and boogie down there uh Boogie walks down there. He's like, what's up, Ben? <laughs> he's just punching, punching the windows, windows out. He's like, 
just breaking windows book <laughs> like it was nothing like just a regular happening it was like we're really setting up uh, at least like fenwick here uh being i mean we we didn't really know he was maybe much of an alcoholic at this point but that no, something yet. was maybe a little off with him There's some wires not yeah. connected some yeah it was frayed wires or something yeah i said uh fenwick is a schmuck because he because bug's like fenwick don't be a schmuck you know fenwick's like it's a smile it's a smile there's a uh, lot of like kind of i guess like uh i don't know if it's just like the phrases that were popular at that time that kind of came up but i I thought some of them were kind of odd and weird yeah you she's know, deaf yes yeah, she is deaf. so that, that was one of my notes a little bit later on i was like is that a good thing like is she deaf because she's like ice cold or something or it's like nah she's she's hot and she's deaf she's deaf yeah yeah uh yeah, and then we have uh, right after that. Oh, Fenwick sold his date for five dollars. Yeah, I guess. bargain. Which yeah, apparently. <laughs> uh, and then uh, he drives ahead of all of them. This is where we kind of meet, you know, the rest of them. We we know uh, we we only met like Boogie and Fenwick, and I think uh, we met someone else initially, right? Because someone said that Fenwick was downstairs smashing windows. Oh yeah yeah. Uh, but anyway, then we get introduced to the rest of them, other than Billy, um, who's coming in that night, and then Fenwick uh, makes he speeds ahead of everybody and makes it look like <laughs> <laughs> he had been in a horrible car dead. accident, which uh, I said is a little far for a joke. It's a little far, and and you know what? Like I, well, I'll be the first to admit I don't know shit about cars, but this car is on its side, and that can't be good for, you know anything probably i would imagine. i know when cars like flip upside down it's really bad um you know because you got all your fluids and shit dripping out of places it probably shouldn't be that's what i thought so i i have to imagine it being on its side isn't super healthy also just scratching the shit out of the paint on that side rolling it over because it's not like you you laid down a you know a soft carpet or anything for it to roll over on and yeah you, you like did it real quick so your friends didn't yeah, see i don't know maybe cars were just lightweight as shit you know they were made out of cardboard or something but yeah, the the whole thing kind of seemed brain. like I was like, this is not the big brain move, but it also seemed in character Fen- for Fenwick not to give a shit. <laughs> yeah, fuck mature. <laughs> that and like yeah, still the era of like don't cuss in front of women. He's like, hey, no, like, oh. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, and I liked that we had Campbell's ketchup. I wasn't really aware that Campbell's ke- Campbell's had a ketchup. Uh. But apparently, yeah, definitely apparently detail I thing. I missed. I saw it was a ketchup bottle, but I didn't. Just I didn't assume Heinz. Yeah, yeah, that's that's that brand recognition, man. <laughs> you get a, a red bottle with a white label, and it can only be Heinz. Heinz took over. Yeah. You didn't even notice. Um, yeah, then we're at the diner. What's, what do you got? So yeah, once once we got to the diner, I was just talking about how uh, like the dialogue felt very sitcommy. Mm-hmm. And and that's what gives maybe just a little bit of weight that they did like these diner scenes like at the very end where everyone kind of had like that that cadence with each other with how they spoke because I I felt like I was I was even some of like the uh, like when they were doing the drive and stuff before they found Fenwick flipped over just like some of the dialogue that occurred throughout that it's like I felt like I was watching almost like an episode of like Seinfeld or something <laughs> like just just with the way like some of like that back and forth dialogue was with and then with some of the conversations at the diner I was like I feel like it's almost sitcommy yeah. um and it, it was it was nice I I thought it helped kind of carry that first scene where we're kind of just watching a group of people shoot the shit a little bit and just uncovering a little bit about their lives and personality uh and it was, it was a really great way to do that um also had no idea how old anybody was until we started talking about like them, some of them being in like law school and stuff because mm-hmm. one of the comments made in the auditorium was like, oh, well, that's what you get with, you know, taking out an 11th grader or something. Definitely didn't age well. <laughs> yeah. It was like, they're they're not fully developed. And he was like, well, our tits were or something. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's like, no, they're fake. And he was like, really? First-hand information or something. I was yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. It's so rough. Yeah, that's a little much. <laughs> Uh, I like the little argument about the roast beef sandwich. Uh, I, 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 and again, Modell to me was the best character that we just had no story for. Yeah. And, uh, I've, I felt like I related to Modell in the way of like, I don't know. I feel like I'm a little more direct cause he was like, he would never get to the point. Yeah. But, uh, you know, 
I understand. Like I, wanna... I don't want to inconvenience you yeah. or anything, but I want you to kind of be aware that I might, yeah. might want something. Yeah, like I'll eat that if you don't finish it. Do you want it? Oh, well, not if you're going to eat it. Yeah. I mean, that's that's exactly how I feel, though. You know what I mean? Like, well, if you if you aren't, I would love some. Yeah. And then just how Eddie gets so fired up about it. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. The problem is, it's like everyone's probably had a conversation like that where yeah. it's like, hey, will you just fucking tell me what you want? Like, yeah. I swear to God. Yeah. Use and your then, words. And then next thing you know, Shrevy's eating the fucking yeah. sandwich. <laughs> He's like, oh, I can't believe you're eating the sandwich. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, my next note is all the way to the fried bologna sandwich. I know in between um, the diner and that, they uh, uh, pick up Billy from the train station. So do you have anything? Uh, uh, I have just a couple of things. So I did, you know, I was kind of harping on like the, the mooch vibe that we were getting off of, uh, Modell? of Modell there. Yeah. It's like I really love that interaction. Yeah. Um, and then uh, just like once, you know, they had, they had picked up um, Billy and everything, and uh, he got back over to um, home. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I, I'm trying oh, to think. Ba- of- oh, when they go back to the diner after they pick up Billy? No, it just went the the that. Um, oh, when Billy goes to Eddie's house. Eddie's house. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I was trying to think of whose house it was that he woke up, but like the very first thing he did was like he woke up and like lit up a cigarette. Yes. And I was like, "What?" Number one, just watching this movie, I was like, "Wow, I could use a cigarette." <laughs> like, I just, yeah, they, they I, I really should have been smoking the entire movie, I think, to to capture it uh, accurately. But yeah, just to you know, wake up, just light up a cigarette in your like childhood bedroom, like yeah, yeah. like it. It just seemed like such an awkward setup, but like that's you know that was just life and yeah. his mom just being you know like super wanting to get him out of that house. <laughs> Well, if you think about the 50s, too, like, I mean, when, when did we discover smoking was bad? Because, like, we smoked indoors until, like, I'm pretty sure, like, we still smoked indoors when we were kids, right? No. I mean, obviously not us. Yeah. <laughs> I kept on trying, but. In kindergarten? Yeah. Where's the rest of the blocks? <laughs> No, yeah, no, I uh, kept going into the play area, and they kept taking away my cigarettes, so I just, That's I had to give it up. Bullshit. Yeah, it was going to be expensive. <laughs> the fucking, like, Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> all, the, <laughs> all the fucking, like, you know, playground pipes are just filled with smoke. Yeah. Kids up there crawling around. <laughs> they're, they're, throwing cards <laughs> out. they're throwing cards down and shit, like yeah. it's a whole thing. <laughs> Playing cards where, where all the tunnels join. Yeah. <laughs> Three aces. <laughs> Fuck your mother. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit right there <laughs> um yeah i just said i said eddie sucks it's <laughs> <laughs> the word uh, he's like he's just like berating his mom he's like a fried bologna sandwich is not a lot to ask a person it's like make it yourself bro yeah. like she's on the phone come on like you guys and, but her just like holding the knife the whole time yeah. <laughs> i was just like do you really want to be aggravating the woman holding the knife right now he gave no shits yeah uh yeah was, i mean this movie's called Diner. Just go to the diner. <laughs> but that was obviously like, hey. We spent like 95% of our time there. Just go to the place yeah. that you're already going to go to after this. You're going to, yeah, you're going to eat a bologna sandwich. You're going to play pool and then you're going to end up at the diner. Yeah. <laughs> just go, just to, go the to the diner and then go play pool and then go back to the diner. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was just a lot. I don't, I don't like the, like the rich kid concept, you know, just the dude who's like, come on, mom. Just like. Not even a rich kid, but like the just the entitled almost. The like entitled, the, like, do what I say, mom, make me a sandwich. Yeah, it's like, buddy, it's not that hard to make a fried bologna sandwich. Mm-mm. Anyway, wouldn't fly, not in my house. No, yeah, no, I would not have been able to get that. <laughs> but also the fact that it was like two thirty in the afternoon, right? <laughs> you know, Ma, what's for breakfast? <laughs> it's like, bro, it is lunchtime and barely. It's uh, it's time for you to get the fuck out of my house. Oh, also. I'm pretty sure he, like, ripped that shirt. Like, I'm pretty sure I heard a tearing sound when he was putting his shirt on when he got out of bed. Yeah. And then, for whatever reason, we just kind of moved past it. So, I don't know if that was intentional, unintentional, whatever. I'd like to have a diner DVD just to know. <laughs> Honestly. Their deleted but... scene where they're like, nah, this one just looks natural. Just roll with it. Oh, like, I wonder if it was just, like, a gag. Like, if there was a gag reel there. And then just like, shh. Oh, no. <laughs> you know. But, oh, and his sock definitely had a hole in it when he yeah. put it on. We've all been there. Things I didn't write down, but 
See, if there's a so- oh, there's a hole in my sock, quick sidebar, if there's a hole in my sock, I'm not putting it on. Yeah. If I discover when I'm putting I'm like, nope, because end of the day, I'm going to have like a toe and a fucking like headlock. You know, it's not going to be good. Um, all my sock holes I discover like when I get home and I take my shoe off and I'm like, ah, man. Yeah. What's the worst is you take your shoes off at somebody's house oh, and, and, and then yeah. you go like, Oh no! They're gonna think I'm a peasant and can't yeah. afford socks. They're gonna think I'm some like dipshit who's just like, hey, I'm just gonna, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, the TV store customer doesn't like colored anything. LOL. So I said. Yeah, really, really speaking to the age there, <laughs> the era. Uh, yeah, he definitely he was he was he was his own guy. Yeah, he knew what uh, he wanted though. You know, he's, he he's, wanted. He's, he's grabbing his his jacket and he's like, I want a twenty two. 22 inch Emerson, uh, cabinet style, you know, no record player or anything. He's like, uh, yeah, well, he'll go look in the back. Why don't you just look around for a while? It's a hi-fi system. What's hi-fi? High fidelity. I don't want any high fidelity. Yeah. It's just, just dismissive of the, I just want a TV. I mean, you know, but we've all, we all know an old person who's just like, I just, I, I, I like Very an Emerson. Stubborn. Just, just give me what I want. Yeah. It's like, let me, yeah, let me go in the back and fucking make it for you. And yeah. then I'll get you exactly what you want. I like Fenwick's little thing when he comes in there and he's just messed Sloppy. up. Fucking, yeah. So uh, even on the first watch through, like I was, I was very concerned for Fenwick. I was like, we're, we're obviously set up this character to be at least a little bit like mentally, like having some issues or he's just straight up an alcoholic. So yeah, just him kind of slopping in there. He's lighting his cigarette on like the, uh, uh, the burners that were up front there, <laughs> yeah, which obviously aren't hooked up. Yeah. But you know what I mean? It's just, Something had to have been wrong with his brain a little bit there, and Kevin Bacon did a fantastic job of of selling this character. Yeah, I liked it. Um, uh, like there, there's the glimpses of like they're kind of. It's just funny how they're like kind of concerned about Fenwick, but at the same time they're not at all. Yeah, you know they're like, hey, fall in. You know, like why? Why are you doing this? And then we just they just breeze past like whatever the hell he was. Yeah, he was doing. You know, like with when Shreve's like, are you, are you drunk already? In the story, it's like, he's like, eh, I don't know. I'm like, he's like, I'm, I, I think okay. he said, like, I'm feeling antsy or something. I don't uh, know. I'm feeling antsy or something. I don't know. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's like, obviously, something is going on. Check on your funny friends. And then Shreve is just like, all right, bye. Yeah. He just let him, <laughs> I mean, he's at work. What's he going to do? But, well, right. I know. It was just kind of like, you. you are you drunk right now? And then like, eh, whatever. It's like you're dropping your gloves and shit. Like sloppy. Yeah. Very sloppy. Uh, do you have anything? I, my next note is them and the Eddie and Billy in the pool hole. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You go. Oh, okay. Me go. Okay. Uh, Eddie sucks once more. <laughs> uh, talking about women. And, uh, I said, might he be gay? Cause uh, I don't know, he just and maybe he's just like one of those like, just like I don't talk to the women. I just, you know, I don't know. I mean, granted, you know, people can be weird. People can be weird, and he's weird. I'm not saying if you're weird, you're gay yeah. or whatever. I'm so just... I, the the yeah, the first first watch through I did of this, um, I there were like a couple of scenes where I was you know maybe starting to have that scope I think, and I I tried to focus on that a little bit more on the second one. I definitely see some things where like it might make sense, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of tough to say. It it could have just been that he was weird and he's just trying to fit into the cookie cutter piece in general. Could have been maybe he just wasn't really super interested in you know the the cookie cutter life. But he was like, well, I gotta gotta get with the girl and and get the kids and get married and and do all that. Yeah. So it, it it might have been a little bit of just the regular conforming to what all of his friends are doing, right? Rather than it necessarily being. I want to bang Eddie or something. Eddie wants to bang Eddie. Yeah. I'd fuck me. Or Eddie wants to bang. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, I just thought it was funny. Cause like, he's talking about like how, Oh, you don't have to talk to a girl. He's like, it's like you just go walk. down to the diner, you know, talk to the guys. And then he's I was like, like, that's, that's so healthy for a marriage. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, uh, at the pool hall, he's like, He's like, it's sure as hell not to make her happy. Forget that. <laughs> like, Billy's like, yeah, I wouldn't want to make her happy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he's not catching on to the sarcasm. He's like, yeah, no. He's like, no, if she was a ball breaker, I wouldn't be marrying her. No way. No way. Like, 
Yeah, really, really questionable conversations, man. I, so I just thought it was funny because then he's telling uh, Boogie later that, you know, he hasn't actually, you know, slept yeah. with a girl. So then I was like, huh. That was the first time. I That was at the point at which I was like, oh. Maybe there's so a reason for that. Might he be gay? Yeah. yeah. But then obviously on the second watch and I write, might he be gay at this point? But anyway. Um. My next note is in the movie theater with the penis popcorn. So yep, that's where that's where my notes start again. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Cool. Um, yeah. So I I was kind of just just laughing. Whereas like the uh, the dick popcorn is like is that the start of like the thing? Because you know like yeah. we, there's been I feel like that joke kind of like throughout like just pornos and just kind of like joking stuff in general where it's like yeah. oh no my dick's in the thing. Yeah. So I was like okay is that like the start of it or is there like already a bit of a running gag throughout that in general? But yeah. uh, number one just that the gambling addiction must be so serious for Boogie. Cause yeah, I mean, obviously he's everything he's trying to call out. as like a bet. Like, Oh, you got, you got 50 on that. Yeah. Which to me, like too, was funny. Cause like, I, I don't know. I think we looked up, I think I looked up the money in, in that era. Mm-hmm. And it's like, 50s actually the junk, like a lot. There, yeah. And that's why know. it was a huge deal when he mentioned the, uh, the was it the basketball game? It's yeah, like two thousand yeah. or something. They were supposed to be shaving point. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh shit! <laughs> like, <laughs> you're he's a hairdresser and he's putting in. Uh, you know, I don't think he had the money, and that's you're his really biggest problem. Really but... have to put down some, put in some hours. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, the the simple fact that he talks his way out of the out of the popcorn thing yeah. with but with but that can only mean that she was kind of into it you know what i mean like, like a she, little like it like she at least liked him enough yeah but like it uh, honestly like it, it was kind of cringy just hearing him try to explain he's like oh you know i i, I got a hard on you know and i just you're you're so you're knockout you know and i i try to come off as cool and i don't want you to think i'm hustling it's like you are literally hustling right now because you're like touch my dick so i can get 200 bucks for my friends yeah yeah and I don't know how he thought that made sense, you know. I think he's, he's immediately just, like if I had that bet, which I wouldn't make, by the way. Yeah, um, I'd shit. I'd let her know. I'd cut her in. Be like, hey, you know what? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I got a bunch of buddies who are acting like I couldn't go on a date with you. Um, I know this is really inappropriate, yeah. but if if you grab my shit in this movie, I'll give you fifty dollars, and I want. To sound that you know, I don't want it to sound like you're a prostitute or something, or I'm paying you for a service because I do like you. Want to spend some time with you, yeah. but so really let me get back at the boys. Yeah, and we'll go do whatever you want. With yeah, the rest of my winnings. Yeah, be like I won't ask you for nothing again like that. We can still you know keep going out like normal or whatever. I just you know yeah. this 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 would. Be I'm in a hole. Yeah, I'm in a hole. <laughs> Help a brother out. <laughs> Help a brother out. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how I would have gone about it. You know, keep keep people in the loop. Yeah. So she was either really dumb or at least into him enough to be like, I think right, she was well, into he, him. He tried to lie. He lied for me. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, bro. Also kind of weird that he just like burst into the bathroom like that. Like, I don't, I don't know what the layout of this place was, but you know, she runs into the bathroom. He just comes in right after her. It's like, okay, hopefully there's nobody else in here. Right. And then, you know, the gal's coming the, in after. Yeah. It's just like, uh, yeah. And she's, he just kind of looks at her and she's like, Okay, I'll yeah. leave. Yeah, probably just assuming they're gonna bang in there or something. But uh, my next thing is Eddie and Shreve talking about marriage outside the diner. Yeah, and this this is where I got to put it, and I was like, I don't think Shreve's like a very good husbando, like whatsoever. Uh, because number one, he's not selling marriage in any way while he's having this conversation. Um. Yeah, it was it was just kind of cringy and embarrassing, and it was almost like him trying to convince himself that he wants to be married. Yeah, when it's definitely not there. It was definitely like, yeah, uh, <laughs> if someone else likes something, and cause, but you definitely don't like it. Yeah, like is the scenario it reminds me of where, you know, say you're really into, I don't know, let's say for some odd reason I didn't like roosters, <laughs> which is the most ridiculous thing in the world because mm-hmm. I eat there multiple times a week. But let's say you really liked roosters and I didn't for some reason. And then I wanted to be like, hey, I don't like roosters. And you were like, well, I I really like it, actually. And then, like, the conversation of me being like, oh, well, there were things. There were things. good things about it. That I liked. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, you know. the I wouldn't go to the, Roosters, I mean, but I understand why you want to go there. <laughs> you're right. Yeah, it was definitely one of those conversations where, yeah, he's just like, he's yeah, he and like you said, he's convincing himself for sure. Yeah. A little bit. Um, and then also going on for, um, this was just after the uh, they got out of the uh, movie theater. Where they were kind of walking. Um, and then uh, it was Billy who punched. Punch, yeah. uh, do you remember that guy's name? It's like something. No, Wilson. I should have wrote it down. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, punches that dude or whatever. And then, you know, they're just walking away. All the boys are just like chatting about it. And then um, is it Beth? Yeah, yeah. Beth is like trucking behind, like trying to <laughs> catch up because everyone. Yeah. So in, like Shreve, just everyone left her. Yeah. So she was like a good chunk away, like catching up to them. Willard. Willard Broxton. There it is. Willard Broxton. There you go. Thank you for picking that up. Um, so, yeah. So, like, she's catching up. So, number one, like, they just straight up abandoned her and were, like, you know, with, with the moment there, which I was like, okay, what the hell? Yeah. And then just, like, she's asking, who's Willard Broxton? Who's Willard Broxton? Shreve, who's Willard? And, like, just straight just up keeps talking ignoring her. Yeah. Or ignoring her, and I'm just like Jesus. Like they they really did a good job of showing the fact that like he doesn't want to talk to her, <laughs> at least not in front of his buddies. Yeah, and then you know that's that's just cemented more so once he's he's having that conversation. He's like, you know, I can go to the boys, we can spend all night, you know, talking till the sun comes up or whatever, but I can't hold a five minute conversation with her. Yeah, I was like, I don't like most people, but I feel like I can get away with the five minute conversation. Like I can bullshit with anyone. Yeah. But yeah, he's just like, yeah, I, I can't stand her, basically. And I was like, why didn't you marry her, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> what were you thinking? You like boning. Yeah. I mean, don't we all? But obviously, it's you know, it's, it's a foundational issue there. All yeah. they talked about was sex and how to get it. Right. And there just wasn't anything else there. Wasn't a, didn't sound like he had a solid relationship. No. Beforehand. You got to be friends with your spouse, I think. I think that's an important thing people forget. You got to be friends with your spouse. Yeah. And that was the marriage uh, counseling podcast with <laughs> Jason and Tyler. Uh, tune in next week to no. Um, so then they make the bet in the diner about uh about uh Bo- Boogie, um sleeping with I don't remember her name, but the girl who uh apparently liked that he had his penis in the popcorn a little bit mm-hmm. enough to listen to him lie. And I said, that's a weird bet. Let me watch you bone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, to cash in. Uh, and I wrote down just the many meals, man. And then my next thing's Rick. That argument. was, yeah. So what do you just just to, to harp on it, I think his name was like Eric or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like that, I think number one, it was just impressive that they were setting it up to where like, yeah, he's eating like 22 fucking sandwiches or something. Yeah. But just that it was like a, uh, like it was an experience. Like they were watching an event or something. Like they, they were sit over on their booths and stuff just like staring at him just yeah, in amazement they're like they're like looking at the menu looking at his he's, plates he's like, and he, that is the whole left side of the menu he's like no it's just the sandwich he's like does that include the chicken dinner and he's like yes it does <laughs> yeah he's like sitting there reading yes <laughs> but uh, i don't know there's just that kind of that small thing of establishing like they had to have known each other you know like they they got that community there they're both there enough or yeah, yeah the, the lead, that guy and the group are there enough that uh, yeah. I, I just like small stuff like that where it really sets kind of, you know, a lot of foundation without actually explaining anything. Yeah. Stuff like that always works well and I find really neat. Yeah. Um, and yeah, next thing I got is a record argument. You got anything between that? Uh, yeah. So just about like when uh, uh, Billy was down at like the old TV station. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wanted to make comment that I always found like those like consoles with everything like super cool. And uh yeah, that was that was my main comment there. It was really cool to send there, and I like paused a couple of times just to kind of see what was like on the deck there, because I just think some of that old technology is super cool and how yeah. they used to do old TV. We should probably discuss what Billy's storyline is a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so I guess he he's always been friends with this girl. Yep, six but I years. Don't then. remember her name. Yeah. And uh, apparently she visited him in New York when he was at school, and uh, apparently. The thing went down. Yeah. We all know what the thing is. Sexual intercourse. And uh, apparently she's pregnant. Yeah. One and done. It, it Boom. Only, it only takes one. It Remember, only kids, once. don't risk it for the biscuit. Because if you do, you'll get pregnant and die. That last part didn't rhyme at all. No. Okay. Oh, was it supposed to rhyme? I, th- I oh, just no, thought I it was. Oh, no, I fucked a- it up. <laughs> 
<laughs> I guess I just assumed you'll that get pregnant and dignant. Yeah, it's a stretch there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, so he they're pregnant, and then she's like not sure what she wants to do, and uh, she thinks he's like kind of foolish because he thinks he's in love with her, and mm-hmm. like he's. And whatnot. Also trying to put himself a little bit in that cookie cutter of like, oh, I've, I've always had feelings for you and let's just get married. Cause Is I've... that how you see it though? Because I think, in my experience, I think the only time a dude is like friends with a girl, because like, I mean, I could say it because like <laughs> my wife, mm-hmm. because, you know, the only reason I stayed friends with her and wanted to pursue her, I was like, well, yeah, it's because I kind of want to date you and stuff. You know, I I mean, I, I'm not saying men are incapable of having friendships with women and be strictly platonic, but I mean, he like I don't have any woman friends outside of like just like you know, oh my friend has a wife and it's like oh we talk, but it's your friend's when, wife and it's yeah. not your friend kind of thing, right? Yeah, I like that. I would never like call that friend <laughs> separate of my friend, right? You know what I mean? Like I don't have any of those. Yeah, and but, it, uh, I guess he had it mentioned in one of the other conversations that like he had kind of those feelings for, her, but never really told. Or I guess you know he he finally tells her. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I think if you know you mess up and you bang, like obviously there is something there. I think I think she's more in denial about her feelings than mm-hmm. than he is. I think he's like, no, I you know I want to marry you and we have a kid and yada yada and. I don't know. I think she's a little more in denial. Yeah. If I had to well, I mean, she's also the one that, you know, it, it kind of happens to her, you know, because like, sure. she's the one who's pregnant now and she has to figure out, uh, okay, so I guess I'm pregnant now. Do I like get married and spend the rest of my life with this guy I've been friends with for six years? Or right. like, what's, what's my move? So I did, I'm sure it's, you know, a lot of pressure and stress on her to figure it out kind of thing. But yeah. Yeah. Poor gal. But yeah, she definitely seemed a little like kind of icy about <laughs> yeah it in general, which was I'm sure rough for him. But well, and she is in a hard situation because like I, I mean, he's still in school trying to figure his thing out, and then um, you know, she's kind of got. I mean, she you know she's working here. I don't know if it's an internship or if this is her actual job or yeah what, but it seems like she's you know on the right track. Like you know, a pregnancy is definitely going to you know, throw this off track a little bit, whatever yeah. it is she's doing with, because we don't really go into detail of what it is she's doing. And if they're all that college age, I don't know if she's done and this is her job now, or if, again, she's in some sort of internship, but yeah. And I got the record argument. Yeah. No, let's go to that. That's good. Um, I understand where Shreve's coming from, but he was a little mean. Yeah. Um, That's so, and, and, and just to kind of, start with that and, and work backwards. So yeah, I, I, I kind of understand the, the organization and like the, him wanting everything to be in a very specific way because he is just that crazy passionate about the music. So I totally understand that. And then also your spouse, not respecting that in any way. Yeah. Like I, I, I don't really remember if they clarified like how long they had been married. Couldn't, or like or, couldn't be long. Yeah. If I had to guess. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, so we, we I didn't have much of a timeline there to kind of base that off of. But it's like if you take into consideration like total time spent together and like she at least knew some of the instructions right. on how to organize things. It's like she had like the layman's yeah version of it where I think he goes a little far. He definitely does. But like from from, you know, her perspective, it's like she knew some of the rules, but then openly admits I don't care. I don't care about the rules. Yeah. I just want to listen to records or whatever. Which that's very disrespectful. Yeah. I think. It's like, I don't care about your hobby. I just want to enjoy the parts I want out of your hobby. And it's like, well, that's not, it's not the back and forth thing. Like, I like it to be this way. Help me out. Right. So, I mean, I, 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 I kind of really feel for him because I, I can understand a little bit of that. Um, but it, it made me kind of look back and take like, just kind of note of some of the music that was like throughout it. But it's like it's it's almost like like uh, like Shuby's character like picked out the soundtrack for the movie because yeah. I would almost be in character for him, you know. Um, but it was a dynamite soundtrack, really. Like all all the stuff with just in you know the interim scenes or whatever. Um, there were a lot of bangers on on that movie, and it was it was really fun, and I think I appreciated it 
a bit more after kind of hearing that argument and then imagining that Shrevi picked out the soundtrack for the movie. That uh, that made it a little bit more fun. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, I don't know, I guess I'm kind of an efficiency guy. Because, like, I understand where he's coming from because, like, I feel like I get a little obsessive with the way I organize things sometimes. Yeah. Some people just have things and it's got to be that way. Um, but, <laughs> I don't know, on her perspective, I'm like, yeah, like you said, the whole disrespect thing of just, like, I only want my what I want out of it. And right. I don't want to, but like, all right, well, if you want to listen to the music, why don't you like, I guess I'm thinking of like the, like it, the way of not getting in trouble of being kind of efficient about it, efficient about it. And just being like, all right, this is right here. Let me grab like a slip of paper or something. Mm-hmm. And just stick it right here. This is where this goes back. And just yeah. put it right back. Yeah. I mean, it's that's like put your toys away from this. It's a very early lesson. Yeah. hundred percent. Take it out. Come on, Beth. Take the record out, put the sleeve back in, put the record down. Yeah. Just, just make it one, one thing. Maybe it's a failure on both sides. You know, one of them a little bit. never bothered to care enough. The other one didn't bother to make it easy enough. You know, they're compromise. Or Marriage just, counseling uh, part two. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. Compromise and just alphabetize it. Don't, don't go by genre. Yeah. I understand the genre part. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and there's the uh, the manger. Fenwick gets arrested after uh, wreaking havoc in the manger. Do you have anything? Uh, just that I was feeling really sad for Fenwick <laughs> at this point. This. Like that. Like like I I was I was really expecting like his kind of arc here to go much like darker yeah like i i I full-on thought that we were gonna lose fenwick in this like 100 percent, i thought we were gonna lose him <laughs> you think maybe he was just gonna be like he was gonna do something stupid in the cold well the you know, or, or just like driving out you know while he's been drinking and you know it, it, it we, we get back to the intro way. scene where he crashes and you yeah. know it's it's them thinking it's the joke thing 100 percent. If this was like a darker drama, we would have lost Fenwick on hundred. Come on, Fen, stop playing around. Re- yeah, you Fen. can you can see it now. Fen, Fen, yeah, get up, buddy, get up. Come on, where's the ketchup bottle? It's not even Heinz. It doesn't taste like ketchup. It's not ketchup. <laughs> so it's good. It's not ketchup. I can't stop eating it. This would go good in a barbecue sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Planet oh. Terror. Yeah, right. and I said yeah. I said mental health is a real thing. Maybe not in the. Uh, uh, 1959 or nine. I'm right sorry. I see end, right? COD lobby in your notes, and I just have to know why it's there. Oh. <laughs> so I, I was thinking, just just in general. Um, so once once they had gotten uh, into jail, and uh, the guy was like, "I'll hit you so hard, I'll it'll kill your whole family." <laughs> I was like, these guys would have killed it in a COD lobby. Yeah, you know, just with the the kind of shit talking and and the banter they can get back and forth there. Um, I I just had that that parallel there where if these dudes were in like a modern warfare lobby, um, that their shit talking would have been dynamite. I just found that funny that that was his line because like I mean if you think about it, it's really not that great a line. Yeah, you know, because it's just it's just like um, it, it, in my mind it's kind of like I'll, I'll kill you times infinity. Yeah. <laughs> it's like parallel to that, you know. Um, I don't know. It's just funny. Yeah, but they all get arrested because Fenwick's naked in the manger, and then he's so drunk that they try to say like, "Hey, Fenwick, we should probably go." And Fenwick straight up freaks out. Fenwick and like has, fight, has, has like a, a mental episode. Attack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor Fenwick. He, I, I hope he gets help in his universe. I hope he gets help. Yeah. <laughs> and then his dad just lets him like dry Sid. out in jail. Yeah. Uh, and then they're in the diner, and Boogie's just. He's talking to Eddie, and this is where Eddie, or Boogie gathers that uh, Eddie is a virgin. And uh, Boogie is, like, pouring sugar into his hand and eating it. And then he's just washing it down with Coca-Cola, a.k.a. more sugar. Yeah. So. I thought that was kind of wild, but I also have to look back to when I was a kid, and I would just grab a couple sugar packets, tear them open, and... Dude, when I knew we're... Snort him like a line of cocaine. When we had a bag of sugar in the house... Dude, I would fucking grab a spoon and just, like, eat a spoonful of sugar. Yeah. And, like, just a couple wired. times. <laughs> yeah, dude, if I found the sugar when I was a kid... <laughs> like, if we didn't have any, like, actual, like, treats that I could steal... Because I was such a food sneaker. Yeah. When I was a kid, I was so bad. 
with the food sneaking, which is why I was always fat and probably a little fat still. Yeah, definitely fat still. And, uh, yeah, man, if there was nothing else to steal, it was just fucking mouthfuls of sugar. <laughs> like, See, I, I, wouldn't think, I wouldn't think that would be very filling, you know, but it would at least it'd be a good taste was, in your mouth. It was you know? the sugar addiction, yeah. you know. It was no, just like, I feel that. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm on to the football test. Um, maybe I'm I'm missing my order of operations because I think we had another scene back at like the uh, the TV station. Okay. In between that. Oh, when she like sits on the or one of them sits on the the like live the mic yeah. kind of thing, and I I just really appreciate the way that that like scene was framed. You know, where we're in like the the monitoring room. You know, and we just have the dude who's like taking his break, reading his newspaper or something. There's like a a, the tv show that's showing up live on there yeah um and uh you know then, then they start hearing like the the conversation from them in the other room and like our guy is like the the guy who's in the tv room the monitor room is just ignoring it they know, just don't reading his care paper at all kind of thing because you know probably in his head he's just hearing what's going live on the tv you yeah. know what i mean it probably just doesn't make sense and that tone almost kind of matched yeah. with the tv conversation and like their conversation um, and I, I just thought the whole framing of it was was really interesting to have, you know, our uh, static character just sitting here, a whole other conversation going here, and then the focus being in this back room. Um, I just thought that was like a really cool and well done scene. I liked that a lot. Yeah. Uh, so the football test uh, was it was Shreve that fucked it up, right? Because he said an answer. I forgot one thing. Uh huh. <clears throat> Um, so just prior to that, um, is when, um, Boogie got kind of shaken down. Oh, right. Um, but also, uh, Beth was there mm-hmm. and that's when I was like, I, I, I must've missed, or maybe they specifically didn't mention that like they had a history. Right. This is where you find okay. out. Yeah. So I, that's the thing. Even on the second time I was like, I still, maybe I did miss it. Um, <laughs> or maybe I'm retarded. I don't know. But yeah, they they have that conversation there. I'm like, okay, so they got like a little bit of history together or whatever. Um, and I was like, well, that's kind of weird, right? Um, yeah. And then uh, you know he gets shaken down or whatever. But um, I was like, Beth is really out here, like about to risk it all, though. You know, because like, like bitch, you're already married, and like you're just sitting down. And he's like, why don't why don't we hang out? You know, let's, yeah. let's, let's spend some time together or whatever. And he's like, oh, I don't know. Well, is Shreve gonna be at the the football test? Yeah, he's like, are you gonna are you gonna be at the football test? No, me either. Yeah. Um. So I I thought that was kind of shitty. Yeah. And and weird. Um. But then probably because this was just after he'd got shaken down and everything, he was like, so I gotta do something. Yeah. Uh, so what's, I, I, what's her name? Is <laughs> old popcorn penis? Is yeah. Sick. So. Penis. Um, so yeah, I was, I, I, I kind of lost a lot of respect for Boogie in that moment. Mm-hmm. Cause I was like, that's too far. I like, guess yep. like out of, out of all the shitty things you're doing, trying to make money. Like I get it. Yeah. But, like that's way too far. Yeah. Um, but also just kind of bad on Beth for being that willing. Like it didn't take yeah. any pushing I mean, whatsoever for her to be ready for Brown town. Yeah. Oh, Brown town. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was going there. Um, I mean, in fairness, she did walk in to handle the hair for the yeah. bridesmaids. Yeah, it's not or like whatever, she so sought him out. It's for... not like she was like, "Hey, <laughs> hey!" As I push my breasticles together, and I was just walking by, and uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but obviously, but she didn't take a lot of coercing. Yeah. So, but obviously yeah, that. Just goes back to the fact that her and, you know, Shrevey just weren't. Might have got prematurely married a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then just the tension of the scene of, uh, oh, we didn't get the football. So the football test thing, I think Shrevey fucks it up because he says one of the answers out loud. Yeah. And he's like, oh, heard I that heard in there. That. Yeah. 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 That whole scene was, was kind of fun and weird. <laughs> it was so very weird. And the fact that the dad's like. I did that question. <laughs> I contributed that question. Yeah. yeah. It was like, all right, dick. <laughs> Don't you see your son's being a little bit of a fucking maniac here? No, he was all about it. It's probably his idea. Yeah. And then the mom's like, uh, at least his mother would like to know how the test is going. Like, could go either way. Yeah. Could go either way. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, like, number one, like I, I have to imagine on her side of the family, on uh, uh, Lisa's side of the family, they're like, like her what parents. The are, yeah, fuck is going have on? Have got to be losing their mind. Like the the fact that everybody is just so chill with this. Yeah. Is is baffling. And that's this is the other reason I thought he was maybe gay because he's like, he's just looking for any reason not for to now. do it. Right. You know. So there's that. Um. And then Shrevey and uh, and Fenwick leave the leave the party because Fenwick's like, ah, oh, I gotta go, gotta go watch Boogie have sex, <laughs> you know, see if I lose this bet or not. Just normal friend stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then and then the stakes get like super high because Shrevey's like, he's like, hey, uh, can I come with you? Yeah. Yeah. And then they jump in the car and. They're going, you know, they're riding in the car and he's doing the whole music. He's guessing B sides of yeah. records and everything like that. Oh, that was a fun scene. It was good. Yeah. Kevin Bacon. La da 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 bamba. He's such a character. This movie. It's really funny. Like, it honestly, I, I was I was surprised when kind of going through those notes, just that he wasn't as good with like the ad lib stuff because it, yeah. it, he he portrayed that character very naturally. It seemed so. Yeah, he couldn't get very animated and silly. So like, yeah, yeah. Well done, Kevin Bacon. Well done. Killer very, cast the whole way through. Really me. is, yeah. Um. So it's just the tension of the scene is very high because it's like. <laughs> Shrew's just about to watch his wife get boned, and yeah. I don't know that the blonde wig would have uh, been enough. Been enough, yeah. you know. I don't know. I mean, maybe if they hadn't turned the lights on or nothing, right. you know, and it's still just the wig. They only had the context that it was going to be what's her tits, yeah, dick popcorn and <laughs> popcorn penis, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was that was definitely like a little stressful. <laughs> I mean, like I love chaos, yeah. so I was just kind of like. All right, <laughs> just waiting for the the detonation and yeah, yeah. But it it also seemed like that wouldn't have necessarily fit the tone. You know what I mean? Like if we had been going some down some of those darker paths already, yeah. Like maybe it would have made sense for us to have. Oh like, man, Diner Dark Edition. <laughs> Fenwick uh, pulls the prank the second time, but it's not a prank. Yeah. Uh, Shrew's marriage is ended by Boogie banging his because he's like, wait, is that? Mm-hmm. Beth. Uh, so Fenwick's dead. Uh, maybe Modell just kills himself. Maybe like we we don't know what Modell's deal is because he's just like battling. Yeah. Or like he commits rogue. like a heinous crime, you know. Oh, he's a serial killer. Yeah. Or or like you know just like some some random person they all knew or the the girl that everybody liked and called his death. Uh, he killed her. Yeah. She wasn't sick. He had a gun to her head and was like, "Tell him you're sick." Yeah. Tell him you're sick. And then and then some gay sex and then I think we can call it a day. <laughs> Eddie 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 rapes Billy. Pushes that pushes Billy's girl down a flight of stairs. <laughs> shoots Billy, shoots himself. That is so fucked. Diner Dark Edition. Yeah. Um uh, Yeah, that might be the clip. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Coming to theaters. Uh yeah, so that scene's wild. And then I said, just don't, don't, like, cause, uh, then Boogie and one, once Boogie tells her, tells Beth, like, Hey, it's not I'm worth it. Not even shit. for a bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, and honestly, the way they were talking, I almost thought Beth was going to be like, all right, well, let's get you that money. You know? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Cause she was like, that's almost what I thought the first time. Cause she's like, well, what are you going to do about the bet? I thought it was like a... I, yeah, I 100% well, thought uh, she was still down for Brown Town. What are you going to do about the bet? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brown Town. Th- th- really? Brown Town? <laughs> you just keep saying... <laughs> anyway. I don't know why. <laughs> There's a, an album. It's called uh, Downtown Battle Mountain or something. And uh-huh. then it was going to be called, like, I'm Down with Brown Town. Oh, okay. And I don't know why it's stuck in my head right now, but... <laughs> okay. Maybe it was happiness and it was going to be cold. Down. I don't, it doesn't matter. Something happened. Just on the brain. Yeah. The brain's down with brown down right now. Uh, anyway, so they're out there talking for a while, though. And I was like, don't you think they would? Because they already looked out the window to be like, is Boogie here? Yeah. Oh, you know. And uh, 
yeah, they're just sitting there in the closet, like, <laughs> where, where are they? Do you think but he, I know he, he, he said, like, yeah, he's like, oh, maybe they're banging in the hallway, so they didn't want to risk getting out there, getting caught, thrown off the whole thing. But. Yeah. I don't know. I just thought it was a little goofy. Yeah. Because um, they talk a while. So. Yeah. And then the strip club scene's weird. I don't know. That's, <laughs> you that's, that's have anything on the strip club scene. But I have all, that's all I had was yeah. that it was odd. It was really odd. So, like, I, 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 once I had gone through and kind of had like that that frame of reference where I was like, maybe there's a little bit of gay going on, and I'm I'm looking at kind of like the body language. So I mean, obviously they've been drinking, so they're a little yeah. little loosey goosey. But yeah, like there was a lot of like really close like distance between faces a lot. Yeah. Um. So like it, in in the the first part of it, you know, he's he's got his arm draped over him, telling about like the first time he touched a boob or whatever. Yeah. It was like okay, we got a lot of like you know physical intimacy kind of going on here. And then when it was like a, a little bit later on, this was like just prior to when he was getting up to play the thing, uh, the piano. Um, like, I, I feel like there was a moment where like he was like kind of close and they were getting like a little like excited just with like what they were talking about or whatever. And he was like kind of getting jittery and like, like, you know, like he was like, like something was building up at him. And I was like, maybe it's the sexual tension. He's like, all right, we got to we got to pick this up. I got to do something with this because otherwise I'm going to get a little gay here maybe um so i, I felt so like you think billy's gay i, I thought it, it was a little <laughs> bit on both sides there honestly I, I i thought it was a little bit mutual there um i think he's just angsty you know yeah he's like oh, it's like i got girl doesn't go. love me yeah i have a baby with her yeah i need to dance <laughs> or i need <laughs> to ding 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 yeah yeah um so yeah I, 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 honestly i I do felt like that was maybe a little bit gay on both of their sides there um, which Billy's was, not gay, but he's thinking about it. Yeah, you, you know, know, he's like, oh, you know, yeah, I could, try something new. I this girl go, doesn't love me. I could go for some dick. You know? <laughs> I could go for brown town. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think that was the main thing I had there was just that was a lot of like the kind of like those close face shots, and it seems kind of intimate, and just the the conversation we were having. You know, it's like it just it seemed like it was there was the potential energy building up there for sure. Yeah. Um, and then kind of odd that they were just like. Ah, you know, he plays piano good. You know, let him just let him up here. We'll jam. Yeah, it's fine. I can't imagine that would fly literally anywhere. Anywhere, but again, maybe that sax player just had yeah. a friend, and that friend knows he backwards waves. Yeah, because he can't turn his wrist. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a lot of a lot of inside mechanics having to <laughs> be going on for that to work. But whatever you got to do. <laughs> uh, and then nothing like a stripper to uh, you know, talk a guy into getting married. Yeah. Right. No, it's uh, it makes perfect sense to me. Uh, and then next note, so not how the mob works, you know, when uh, Boogie punches Tank in the stomach, and that guy Bagel, who's eating a bagel, <laughs> classic. He's apparently that guy's definitely mob as well. Yeah, he's at least um, in on it in some capacity. I mean, mob guys always control unions and shit like that. That's yeah. why he's got construction connections. So. So Boogie's gonna be a construction guy, and then he says, uh, "He says uh, if you don't have dreams, you have nightmares or some shit, something to that effect." I don't remember exactly how the line went. Yeah. I just thought of that now. But that's a good line. It's a good line, however it goes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then again, I wrote, "Is Eddie gay?" Because you know, I was just, just like. Is he? I don't he, know. He might be. They, they 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 wanted us to think that at least. Like it had I to think be it was at least there. a little intentional, you know. Uh, or I'm just uh, I'm just the boy who cried gay. Maybe yeah. I don't know. Just just really looking for the gays in all the yeah the older movies. Uh, again, logistics of calling back off, off and back on of a wedding. Um, I'm not sure women find trespassing hot. It's when uh, where did he get a horse? Boogie breaks in, steals the horse. That's I mean, I was I'm like, thinking I was it like, was is uh, that really the moves? Then like you're gonna go just run on this girl's pasture and? I think she has horses, horse. plural. Yeah, you know. What I mean? Oh, I'm so sure, I'm but like, sure. not just that. Like you're like an individual is comfortable enough, like running up on yeah some lady's horse and being like, all right, you're coming with me. Yeah, just see. Uh, yeah, I was like, "How's that gonna work?" Has he ridden horses before? Yeah, a lot. There's a lot there. There's, there's so much we tell now. Yeah. Uh, and I just wrote Modell, my favorite character. He, you know, he gives a little speech at the end. Yeah, uh, that was like such a like I. It, it felt like it was like your friend just shooting the shit and actually giving a speech. Like that was that was pretty solid. I like yeah. that. 
Um, yeah, Eddie, Eddie's not going to be hanging out with the guys as much. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it's like, which is okay. Cause Eddie, I never wanted to tell you cause you're a sensitive individual, but, uh, we never really liked you that much. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I like, I like Modell a lot. Yeah. That whole, I, I wanted more of a storyline for him for real. Cause like, honestly, any, any of the scenes he was in, he, he really shined through. And yeah, just that, that last scene there with him kind of giving the speech and everything that was, it was just, it was really fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's about all I got on uh, on diner. Um, I guess I did want to make comment just with the wedding scene in general. Yeah. Um, just with the way the lighting has been done for this entire movie, the wedding scene was like the most well lit scene out of the entire movie. Yeah. And like it just it looked so much better <laughs> because it actually had like really good lighting and everything. And I was like, I you know haven't watched it through twice this past week. Um, kind of seeing that I was just like. Wow, like once we got to the wedding scene, I was like, this movie looks pretty damn good. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, going back, just seeing like some of the other scenes, I was like, oh yeah, it's really kind of kind of dark and muddy in some of this other stuff. But I just, I thought that was neat that the final scene, the wedding and everything gets to be this bright and beautiful thing anyways. Yeah. Some things are resolved. You know, Shreve apparently Seems planned like a vacation. They're, yeah, they're trying. You know, they're on the right track. Maybe they'll talk through some of the, maybe they'll actually talk, you know. Uh, apparently Billy's just or no, no no Fenwick's gonna go to Europe. Yeah. So whether, it's a smile. Whether it's a smile, yeah. It, the, 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 He's, he brings the eleventh grader to the wedding. Yeah. She couldn't have been eleventh grader. They had to just been making fun of that maybe she was younger or something. I, I hope maybe so. she, yeah. Yeah. But um, what else is resolved? Oh, Eddie's mom loves him again. Yeah. <laughs> she, was, she was like, oh, you don't have to leave her. You can come back anytime or something. Yeah. She was sweet and like grabbing his face, I think, a bit. And yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's about where I wrapped up. Also, and I just thought it was ridiculous. You get the cover photo. Yeah. In the end, yeah. That's good. Um, just that it was ridiculous that they marched down the aisle to the Colts theme song. Yeah. The Modell's like, oh, it's the. <laughs> yeah, it's the Colts fight song. It's quite catchy. Quite catchy. Yeah. Uh, they and they left Modell out of the cover photo, which is uh, you know. Yeah. Well, he wasn't a groomsman, right? It was fit. It's fitting. Yeah. They, he's so. he's the outsider, even though he's sort of the insider. Like. Yeah. I don't know. If I had one thing to say, more Modell. More Modell for sure. If they ever remake this, which you know, given Give trends the, in general, it's yeah, gonna happen. Yeah, Modell will be. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Would you give it a rating? I hate rating things. You know that. Yeah. But the other guys insist on it. But they're not here right now. Yeah. So maybe fuck rating this. Fuck movie. ratings. Did you enjoy this movie? Yes or no? I did. I enjoyed this movie the first time and the second time. It was yeah. a good watch. I liked it the third time too. Yeah. Once I hit the 11th time, I uh, I had to go to bed because I'd just been up way too long at that point. Um. But no, it was it was a good time. Definitely something I'd watch again and we'll probably put on a, a bit of a rotation there. Yeah. It's fun hanging out with those guys. It is. Yeah. And it makes me want to go to a diner. Yeah. It makes me want to hang out with my bros and You wanna to go to a diner right now? Let's go. All right. Hit us up on the YouTube, the wherever you get your podcast, Spotify, Apple, yada yada. Uh Twitter at Consecrise One, Consecrise Hotline Yahoo dot com. Email us. Tell us where you're stupid, make suggestions, yada, yada. And, um, you know, listen to our podcast. Just a smile. 